the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, everybody, God bless you. Hey, I hope you had a great, hope you had a great week, a weekend, and I hope you're going to have a great week coming up. And I just want to continue, and we're going to continue to focus on uh, teaching the Word of God and, and making sure that we don't get into or trap into uh, the steal, kill, and destroy that the system always wants us to do, you know? Uh, we need to sit there and focus on what God wants us to do, what the Word of God has asked us to do. Because we, you know, religion has really, and, and the people have really jacked up uh, and manipulated the, the scriptures uh, and, and deceived many of us to think that we're doing the right thing by doing, thinking us to do the right thing even though we do the wrong thing. Opposing the fact is that we need to do the right thing by following what the Word of God tells us to do, to do His will. I sit there and had this um, title today because I, I will sit there instead of calling somebody, just because somebody calls us a Christian, I, I will sit there and say that the non believers based on the fruits that they bear. And the title I have a non believer is using Christianity as a cover to steal, kill, and destroy. And I think a lot of people have been manipulated to steal, kill, and destroy because of their unwillingness to just read the word of God for themselves. You are New Testament saints. You're not Old Testament saints. So you are supposed to follow Christ. And the question is, all the expectations and all the colonization and all the lynching and all the discrimination and all the hate crime and all that other stuff, are those things based on non-believers using Christianity as a cover? A non-believer is simple as this. You can profess yourself as a Christ, as a Christian, but if you're not doing the, what the Word of God says, what the Word of God, not the opinion of others, but what the Word of God says, then it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Uh, you can call yourself a Christian all day long. But a tree is known by its fruit. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're talking about the history. And we're going to use more history as, as well. We're going to use modern day. We even talked about the, the shooting in, in uh, Jacksonville uh, on the 26th of August. This day is the 27th. The, the 26th of August is a, a man went into, a young man too. That means he was taught. He was, he was molded to, to be able to hate people just because of the mere color of their skin. To steal, kill, and destroy and I guarantee you, I bet you if you take his, 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 uh, his when they come out with his background, I guarantee you he will call himself a Christian or been raised in a Christian family. Because I, a lot of people go to church, but they don't do the will of the Father. They don't do the will of Christ. They don't follow Christ. His commandments love one another. They don't want to be led by the Holy Spirit. They want to be led by their flesh. And we need to recognize that we just asking people, if you're not going to be a Christian, stop calling yourself a Christian. If you're not going to be a Christian, stop trying to close yourself as a Christian. And then do bad things. Because the only Satan comes to steal, kill, and destroy. Christ comes to give life and life more abundantly. We're supposed to be ambassadors of Christ. And that's one of the things I wanted to be able to share with you on the, the, the foundational scripture for this study today is the fact that, that you are supposed to be ambassador for Christ. That's who you're supposed to be. You're supposed to be reconciling the world together, not trying to turn them apart. Not sitting there trying to, 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 to manipulate people and exploit people. Do what the Word says, amen? Look at the scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 14. For the love of Christ constrained us because we thus judge that if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that we die for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. 
Wherefore, henceforth know we no man after flesh, yo though we have known Christ after flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who has reconciled us to himself by Yeshua, Jesus Christ, and has given us a ministry of reconciliation. And to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and has given and have committed to us the word of reconciliation. That's why you can't have Christian nationalists, because that means you're trying to sit there and think that we stop somewhere. No, well, we, we're supposed to reconcile the world unto God. We're supposed to be ambassador of Christ. He said, verse 20, so now then we are ambassadors for Christ as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ stand be reconciled unto God. For he has made him to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteous of God in him. Those are scriptures used when we use some historical data, we're going to use some historical pictures of hate and all that other stuff that is not supposed to be in the fruits of a Christian. You're supposed to love one another, bear good fruit, amen? Hey, I hope you enjoy the session. I will break these up in A, B, C, and D. Don't forget to subscribe if you get a chance. Leave a comment if you can. But just remember, Yeshua, Jesus is Lord, and we do what he wants us to do. Hope you enjoyed this session coming up, and uh, I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Bye-bye. <laughs> Let's go. It says, and I'll start reading it here. The church has only recently begun to acknowledge and grapple with the role that Christianity has played in the colonization of North America. Throughout history, we see again and again the name of Christ used in conjunction with dehumanizing acts against indigenous people, even to this day. Students brought up in American school system are well aware of the history of the pilgrims and the religious freedom they sought of Christianity. The earliest colonies were settled because of Christianity. In biblical language, air reference was used to support these colonies. In this book, A Future Without Walls, Confronting Our Division, T. Richard Snyder sums up the connection between faith and colonization. Let me get the next slide in a second. Let me try to get my curse on it. Indigenous people in the area, well, as well as Westwood expansion, famous Puritan minister Cotton Matter compares Dustin to the biblical Harian, Harian, Jael, who saved her people by driving a spike through Cicero's head while he slept. Cotton Miners understood the war between New England Puritans and Indians as battle between good and evil. And this clearly shaped the way he told Dustin's story. Indigenous people, Native Americans, groups in Massachusetts have been asking for the removal of the statue for years and are still waiting for the request to be recognized. Most Christians come into America with indigenous people as having no religion and being in need of refinement. This view is what led the residential schools and boarding schools to systematically separate indigenous children from their families and strip them of their culture. An article from Harvard Puritan, Puritanism Project described this, Christian missionaries did not recognize the custom of the native people as a spiritual or religious tradition in their own rights, and many mission schools effectively removed native young people from their culture. Many colonists, or many Christian colonists and missionaries, even those most sympathetic to the lifestyle of the native 
people and categorized Native Americans as heathens who either accepted or resisted conversion to Christianity. In Canada, the government had just recently begun the work of digging on the grounds of residential schools and have already found the remains of over 6,000 children that died at these schools. Residential schools were primarily run by various denominations of the church and often became a place of the physical, sexual, mental and spiritual abuse, abuse for students. It is naive to think that America is exempt from this sort of injustice and that similar statistics would not emerge if similar works begun, began at American boarding schools. Although it is difficult, we as Christians must acknowledge that the atrocities that have been committed in the name of Christ and continue to affect the indigenous lives to this day. That applies to even people that were bought here slave, or the people that have been exported in Africa. He said, last uh, Canadian residential school closed in 1997. And similar systems were upheld in the United States up until 1978 through the Indian Child Welfare Act. To this day, generations of living survivors remain, remain carrying the trauma of residential schools and struggling to tell their story. Christianity has been used as a vehicle for white supremacy, countless acts of violence, genocides, enslavement, and more have been committed in the name of Christ. North America is not the only one, only place in this world where colonizers have come well in scriptures, along with weapons and disease. As Christians in the modern era, what does it look like to begin the work of repenting for these atrocities? Calvin B. Uh, Curtis, a citizen of the uh, Pactawantami Nation, an author of the book Native, identified belonging and re rediscovering God insists that the work of decolonization must be done in community. We have this split between what it means to live communally, to practice our faith, our faith, the work of justice on an institutional level, and what it means to practice justice on an individual level. I think both are necessary, but if they cannot remember that we do the individual individual works because we are connected to each other, we're going to miss out on everything. We will not work against systems that oppress. What would it look like for Christians to come together and not just acknowledge the church history, but to work toward changing the church legacy? They come before the Father with the sins of colonization and they ask for our hearts to truly seek healing and reconciliation. Some churches have begun making commitments to a reconciliation, which start with acknowledgement and condemnation and continue with tangible actions. A handful of churches have begun returning their church property to indigenous communities of, ter of the territories, such as the PCUSA Dwight Mission Center in Oklahoma. The reality is that all American churches sit on native land. Gordon itself sits on the uh, Pawtucket territory according to native land. Indigenous stories have been systematically raised from our history books, from our education system, and from our memories. Part of the decolonization of our part means listening, absorbing, remembering, and acknowledging indigenous work or indigenous voices. But it must also lead us to action. We see time and time again throughout scripture that God cares for the marginalized 
the people who have been left behind and abused by society. In this case, the church has been the agent of indigenous modernization. The work of healing and redemption is the work of the kingdom of God, reflecting the love of our creator, redeemer of God. Curtis shares a hopeful image of decolonization. Decolonization is not just for the oppressed. It is a gift for everyone. Just as growing pains hurt before the actual growth takes place, so it hurts to decolonize. For some, it hurts like hell. And then one day, we will appear on the other side of healed, our stories told in all their truth. Just like that, we all gather to bathe in the healing waters. And just like that, everyone is made clean. It's about repenting. This is, I just took this one article, I guarantee you, there's many. <laughs> article that will talk about how man, non-believers, professing and calling themselves Christian, have done bad things to people, to human beings, to humanize the people, and to follow the playbook. It's part of the playbook today. Teaching your children to dehumanize somebody, then give you the right to steal, kill, and destroy them. And you know that that's a lie. And you know that you're going to face God if not the justice system today. We need to reconcile. And we need to repent. We need to let the kingdom of God be the, the, the choice of our decision of what we do in life. When we do that, we make a difference. We need to let our light shine, and only way we let our light shine is the knowledge of the, 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 bomb, the bad things that have been done. Because not we look like a joke. And that's what that's what that gives people the right to call us a joke. That gives people the right to sit there and say, well, maybe some of these old religions are, I'm talking about from, from the mythology, and say, oh, maybe maybe, maybe all of those were right. I can imagine. Basically, you can sit there and easy say about the history and say, well, you know, even Christianity is a fairy tale because we sit there and not do what the doctor teaches us to do. But this is the chance. This is the time. This is the way we start needing to move toward doing the thing that lines up with the will of God, pleasing God instead of pleasing man, instead of pleasing a political party. Then you think that it's okay to do the bad thing. But be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. Trust in being led by the Holy Spirit, all of us. Trust in letting the Holy Spirit cleanse us from all unrighteousness so that we can be the righteous of God. We sit there, so many of them sit there and say, well, I'm gonna just watch you. You don't watch me, watch Christ. Follow Christ. Follow what the Word said. What does the Word say? What does the Word say? That's what you're supposed to focus on. Too many of us sitting there trying to, I'm going to watch you. Well, our history has been clear. It's been shown that we have done some bad things. We have not done the will of the Father. We have done the will of man from colonization, exploitation, lynching, slavery, you, you name it. If you watch this thing, then you right, you 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 gonna you can see Christianity is a joke. But if you read the scripture for yourself, and all of us learn to start reading the scripture for ourselves, and all of us start operating based on the scripture, we don't base on the Old Testament. You're not an Old Testament saint. You're not somebody going to a promised land. You are in the kingdom of God then you're supposed to follow his righteousness. Too many times we sit there and try to follow one another. Too many times we sit there and think that it's okay to, do, to, do, to operate like a fool. Oh, man. Do what Christ did. 
Let him be the example and follow his example. Stop trying to follow the examples of people who've been manipulated and lied to. And you know, the, the third century, when we found something, when, when the church became more of a, under the Roman Empire and, and started uh, doing the bad things and forcing people to uh, believe in the faith. It's time for us to repent. Those people, a lot of people that, that were told to do things, didn't know how to read. There's people all the way to the to, to Jim Crow laws didn't know how to read. Talk about the slaves coming out of slavery. They didn't know how to read. Some most of them didn't know how to read. Most of the most of the uh the European whites didn't know how to read either. And therefore, they were dependent on their pastors, on their ministries, on their denomination, on their government to tell them what the right things are. Opposed to saying, let me teach you scripture. Let me teach you the word of God. Let me ask you if you get to start following the word of God. That's it, Nehemiah 8, 8 says, that's one to my, uh, let me see for you, it's to my left. <laughs> or you know slides I guess to, to my right so this, this right here near my 8-8 this, this, is, this stays on the slide all the time it says so they read in the book and the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and called them to understand the reading we need to understand the reading we not only need to understand the reading but need to be doers of the reading we are Christians Non-believers do what non-believers do. We need our believers. Let's do what the Word tells us to do. Let us learn to love one another. And let us repent. <laughs> yeah, we got bad history on some things. Let's repent on those things. And let's do what God tells us to do. Let's love one another. You know? And so I, I wanted to wrap, wrap up with these scriptures that I said I was going to put in. I put them in the beginning. Let's read this again. So we remind ourselves that we need to, to be ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Uh, so let's go ahead and show this, these scriptures. Let me see. Did I, I, I think I, oh, I, oh, this is another thing too. I found this other slide that when I, I put in the slide before a couple of weeks ago. Uh, during the latter half of the Messiah, uh, Renaissance was when secularism, which I did a couple of uh, sessions ago, related violence was most common among Christians. Conflict like the European War of Religion or the Ducks Revolt ravaged Western Europe. In France, there were the French War of Religion. In the United Kingdom, anti-capitalism hate was heightened by the gunpowder plot of 1605. And while secretary balance may seem like an an archaic footnote today, secretary balance among Christians still persists. In modern worlds with groups such as the KKK, which prominently used the, prominently used the Bible along with their official handbook, uh, perpetuating battles among Catholics and battles among other Christians. We saw the, the shooting in Mississippi, not Mississippi, Jacksonville, just yesterday. The day is 27th and 26th, they had a mass shooting again. And the kids sat there and did a manifesto and all that other stuff to, to say why I hate somebody. And you guys should have said, most people hate, if, if you're gonna hate somebody, you should hate somebody for what they did for you, right, to, to you. These people did something based on what they was told, what they were exposed to. And then they actually went and did it. You don't think that most of the stuff that happened happened because somebody, or most of the hate that happens because it's what somebody actually did to somebody, do you? No, it's what they heard. Hey, everybody, God bless you. I hope you enjoyed that session. I hope you stick around and listen to the other session. We're trying to bring them out daily. Um, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, we'll send, in, send it out to the people on my distribution list on the uh, text. 
But the rest of you will we'll see it on YouTube as well as uh, Facebook. Uh, but take a look at this study. Chew on it. Yes, we have a history. We, as believers, but we call ourselves believers. And there's people who pretend to be believers have done some very bad things and manipulated a lot of people. A lot of people didn't know. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, some of the slides there before all the way back to the third century uh, CE of, of being a, a militaristic type of organization. And, and, and all that stuff has been passed on from generation to generation. And, and the sad thing about it, most believers, you don't read the scriptures. You listen to somebody else and, and you sit there and make your decision based on what somebody else is saying instead of reading the scripture for yourself. I'm encouraging you, read the New Testament. You're supposed to be, if you call yourself a Christian, you need to read the New Testament to see what Christ taught you. You, could, you want to be conforming to the image of His Son, God's Son, Christ. Amen? You, that's what the scriptures say. Let's read the scriptures. Let's stop sitting there and let other people tell us what the scriptures say. And then we end up doing bad things. And we know we're doing bad things. We know we're doing the steal, the kill, and destroy. We know that. So why don't we learn to do what the Father taught us to do through Christ? Let us learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. That's what the, this session is all about. It's, it's, it's not about banning or hiding history. It's about repenting. And that's what we can do. We can repent. We can let our light shine. And I, and I encourage us, all of us, to do that. Let our light shine. Let us do the thing that is acceptable to the will of the Father. Let's do the Lord's Prayer every day so we can remind ourselves of doing His will and not our own will. Amen? God loves you. He really does. And it doesn't whether you're a believer or not a believer. He wants you to be reconciled to him. Not to people, not to ministries, but to him. And that's all I encourage you to do too. Reconcile yourself to God. Get that spirituality of being who he wants you to be instead of what the world wants you to be. Stop being manipulated. And start understanding the truth. But the truth will make you free. The truth will set you free. The truth matters. We know we see it on news media and everything else lies. We saw the sit there and the killing in, in Jacksonville. Once again, a senseless killing. Based on what they was told. And, and, and the person killed himself. Even the scripture is like, well, what were you doing? Then that person now has to go before God, will go, just like all the rest of us as well. And I just hope we don't sit there and say, he's looking for his advocate, but he never knew his advocate. He only knew him, and then he died. Let's not be the same way, okay? All right, God bless you. Uh, I, like I said, I hope you enjoy this segment, and the encouragement is to continue to study. Read the Word of God. Read the New Testament for yourself. And let Christ be the example. And it's all about love. It's all about mercy. It's all about grace. Amen. Don't forget to subscribe. Leave comments. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless you. Thank you for listening. I really do appreciate it. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things he's done in our lives. Hallelujah, praise the Lord. Love you.